To access an ad-free version of this video, a downloadable version of the pattern, and a whole slew of exclusive patterns and tutorials like this seaweed stand here, become a member at clubcrochet.com slash seahorse. Hey there, I'm Louie, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to crochet this little tiny seahorse. For this pattern I'm using all worsted weight yarn in 100% cotton. Um, I'll be using this orange red color here. You'll also need some stuffing, of course. Um, because I'm using all worsted weight yarn, I'm using a size whoop, G 4 millimeter crochet hook. You'll also need some safety bead eyes. You can use anywhere from 8 millimeters to 12 millimeters. You could even go higher depending on the weight of your yarn. Um, I'm using, I believe I'll be using 10 millimeter in this video. Uh, you'll also need a pipe cleaner, um, half of a pipe cleaner, really. So you can just take a pipe cleaner, cut it in half. I'd use pliers instead of scissors if you can uh, to save your scissors some harm. Um, and this pattern is worked with a few different parts sewn together, so you should probably get a darning needle. Um, one with a crimped end makes it a little bit easier to get in and out of stitches. Uh, you can make... Because this part, uh, this pattern has a lot of things sewn together, you can make it with the fin on the back, or uh, and ears on the head, or the other way around. Personally, I like it more with the fin on the head, so that's what I'll be doing in this video. But you can do it however you'd like. This one is also made with eight, eight millimeter eyes, so you can get an idea of the different eye sizes. All right. Well, without further ado, let's get hooking. I'm gonna start by making the small fins here. All right, now for the small fins, we're going to start with a slip knot. Pretty easy, pretty cliche. And we're going to start by doing three chains. So we're going to grab this end here, not the tail end, but the other end. And we're going to do three chains. So one, two, and three. For row one, we're going to skip the first chain right here and we're going to slip stitch into the next two chains. Now, as you might have heard, I just said row one instead of round one, and that's because there are certain parts in this pattern that are going to be worked in the flat, meaning that you'll turn after each pattern, and certain parts of this pattern that are worked in the round, meaning you go in a spiral. This one's worked in the flat, so we'll have to turn after each round. So we finished our two slip stitches there, and we will turn. We will chain one, there we go, and now working into the back loops only, slip stitch into each stitch across for row two. So the back loops only, we're going to skip this little chain right there, we're going to start in this back loop right there, okay, back loop meaning the one furthest away from you, so if you see that V, you want this one right there, and we're just going to do a slip stitch into that, so slip stitch right there. We're going to do another one into the next stitch. So here's the one that we just did. You want to go into that one right here. You might need your nail to get under that uh, back loop. And we're going to do another slip stitch. Boom. All right, and that's going to be the end of row two. For row three, we're going to turn. And this time we're going to chain two. One and two. We'll skip that first chain that we made right there. We'll skip that one. And into the second chain from the hook, we're going to make another slip stitch. Okay, we'll just yarn over, pull through both. And we'll do that into the next two stitches as well. Another slip stitch in each chain and stitch across. So one, and here's two. That should be three slip stitches total for row three. And you can see how it makes this kind of, just this kind of simple fin thing. Pretty easy. So we'll go ahead and cut the yarn now. And we'll do a chain one and just pull it all the way through like that. We'll use these two ends to sew it into the body. You're going to want to make two of these. Okay, so just two, two of these same exact things. All right, I'll go ahead and make that other one and then we can get started on the long fin. All right, so next up we're going to make the large fin, uh, the one that is for the mohawk. Um, that's how I like to use it. We can also use it on the back. 
For that, we're going to uh, start with a chain three again. You can do a somewhat long end here. You don't need it too long though. That's probably good. And we're going to start with the same thing where we just chain three, one, two, and three. And we're going to start with row one. Again, this one is worked flat and we'll be turning after each row. For row one, we're going to skip our first chain and we're going to do a slip stitch into the next chain. Right here, boom. And then we're going to do a single crochet into the chain after that, the second chain. There we go, boom. Okay, so a slip stitch, then a single crochet. Now we're going to, uh, for row two, we're going to chain one and turn. And we're going to do a single crochet into the next stitch. We're going to skip the chain right there. We're going to do a single crochet into that next stitch right there. And we're working under both loops now, not just one of the two loops. Okay, and that's going to be the end of row two. For row three, we're going to turn and chain two. So one, two. We'll skip the first chain. So skip that first one. And we're going to do a slip stitch into the next chain. Right here. Oh, there we go. And then we can do a single crochet into the next uh, into the next stitch under both loops, not just the back loop or the front loop, under both of them. So one, two, for both of those bad boys. We'll do a single crochet. Okay, so now you want to repeat rows two and three two more times. So that's going to be three times total. So now we'll do, uh, we'll do our first of the two repeats. So we're going to turn and chain one, and we'll just do a single crochet into the next stitch under both loops right there. Okay. Then we'll do a turn and chain two, one, two, we'll skip our first chain and do a slip stitch into the next, and then a single crochet into the next stitch under both loops. Okay, so there's our first repeat. One more time, turn and chain one, single crochet into the next stitch. Okay, then turn and chain two, one, two, skip the chain and do a slip stitch into the next chain and then a single crochet into that stitch right here. Okay, now you just want to chain one and we can cut the yarn. You want a long enough end that uh, to use for sewing onto the head. So that's probably good right there. And we'll just pull that all the way through after doing our first chain or our chain right there. Okay, and we can sew this onto the head later. All right, well, now we can make our little tube nose. All right, so the tube nose, um, like the next part, the body, are worked in the round, meaning that we'll be working in a spiral without turning. For our tube nose, we're going to start with a slip knot. There we go. And we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay? Now into the first chain that we made right here, we want to work a slip stitch. And that will connect the chain and create a bit of a little tiny ring. See? All right. So for round one, we're going to single crochet six times around the ring, working our stitches into the very center of the ring. So we'll just go into the center, grab our end, go pull it through, and finish our single crochet. Okay, so there's our first single crochet. I'm also going to be working around this tail end. That'll just kind of hide it, and I'll do that for this entire round. So there's one single crochet, two, working into that hole, three, four, five, it's going to be the last one right here, six. So you're not working into the stitches, you're working around them. All right, that's going to be the end of round one. We'll leave this tail end here. We can use that for sewing it in onto the face later, so don't cut it. All right, so for round two, we'll be single crocheting into each stitch around. So this is actually our last chain. 
our first stitch is right here. If you're confused of where your first stitch is, count backwards. So here we know this one's our first or our last one, that V. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. So you go into our first stitch right here, boom. And we'll just single crochet into each stitch across, or I mean around. So there's one, here's our second, two, three, four. I'm gonna pull this a little tighter just so we can really get that end in there. There's five, and our last one will be right here, six. And that's going to be the end of round two. You can kind of see how the tube is being created there. There's a the little, oh, you can still see through it. Oh, hello. All right, for round three, we'll be doing three single crochets. So uh, starting in our first stitch right here, we're gonna do a single crochet in the next three. So there's one, two, and you can see that I kind of pull it tighter after each stitch, so I go into the stitch, I yarn over and pull through, and it's kind of loose right now. I don't really want it too loose, so I tighten it just a little bit, just so I can make sure that I maintain the same tightness uh, throughout my piece. So there's our third single crochet, so there's one, two, three, and then we'll do an increase into this next stitch. So that's two single crochets into the next one. One, two, and then we'll finish this up by doing two single crochets. So after our increase, we'll do two more single crochets. One and two. And that's gonna be the end of round three. You should have seven uh, stitches across or around after round three. All right, so for round four and the last part of our tube nose here, we're going to single crochet two. There's one. And there's two, and then we'll do a slip stitch in the next, right here. You can cut the yarn. Um, you want a long enough end for sewing this on. So let's say like that long, that's probably good. And then you could just pull that cut yarn all the way through, pretty easy. Just like that. And we'll use this for sewing onto the face um, once we make that. All right, and now for our last continuous part, we're going to be doing the body. So we're gonna start with the magic loop method, which is, uh, you can also use the chain two method if you feel more comfortable. Let me show you how to do the magic loop really quick. So you wanna grab the yarn with your non-dominant hand, you wanna hold it like a finger gun, and you wanna take the yarn and go around your index finger three times. So it's one, two, and three, okay? And you wanna grab that end with your uh, remaining three fingers. Now you open your finger up like that, take your middle finger out, place the, oops, place the tail end between your middle and ring finger and hold it down, okay? So hold it, uh, the yarn like so. You wanna take your crochet hook, go under the first two strands of yarn there. So one, two, and grab onto that third one. Oops, then you wanna pull that under the next, the two strands like so. Okay, then you wanna grab another end right here, grab that same uh, end, and you wanna make a chain stitch by pulling it through net again. Now we can take this off of our hand, okay, and you should have this kind of weird ring there. All right, you, that means you did it right. So for round one, we're going to work six single crochets into the center of this ring or into the first of the two chains if you did the uh, chain two method. So let's do our six single crochets. That's one, two, three, four, five, and six. All right. Now we can pull this tighter, and how you pull a magic loop tighter is that you pull this little tail end and watch for one of these two ends to get pulled in. Don't pull it too tight. Just pull it so you know which one to pull. Okay, so you can see it's that top one right there. So we wanna grab the top. Here, let me show you again. When I pull it, see how that top one's moving in? So we wanna grab that top strand that was getting pulled in, and you wanna pull it up away from this tail end. Okay, 
And by pulling it up and holding it right here at the base, you'll see that center yarn gets pulled in and pulls the hole tighter. Now you can pull this tail end to pull that other strand of yarn in, and there you go. That's how you do a magic loop. There you go. All right, and that's the end of our round one. For round two, we'll be doing an increase into each stitch around. So we want to count back to our first stitch to make sure that we're going into the right one. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, right there. Take your crochet hook and place it under that stitch. And into this stitch and each stitch across, we want to do an increase or two single crochets. So we're going to do one, boom. And then going to go into the same stitch that we just made, do another single crochet. Okay, and that's an increase. Two single crochets in the same stitch is called an increase. All right, so we're going to, going to do an increase in each stitch across. So there's our first, here's our second, one, two. Okay, here's our third. You'll be doing six increases total. Here's our fourth. Here's our fifth. And here's our sixth. And if you, by doing six increases total, you made 12 stitches around. So now you should have 12 stitches around in the circle. All right, so for round three, we're going to do three single crochets and then an increase. And then we'll repeat that three times total. So let's do our first, or do our three single crochets. So there's one, two, three and then do our increase right here. One and a two. And you wanna repeat that process of three single crochets and then an increase three times total. So let's do it again. Three single crochets, one, two, three, and then our increase. And that's gonna be our second, our first repeat, but our second, I guess. And one more time, three single crochets, one, two, and three, and then an increase right here. Boom, and boom. And now you should have 15 stitches around in a circle. All right, so for rounds four through six, that's three rounds total, four, five, and six. Three rounds. We're going to do a single crochet into each stitch around. You should have 15 stitches in each round. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those three rounds of single crochets, and I'll be right back. All right, that's going to be our, the end of round six and our three rounds of single crochets. I can tell it's the end because if I count back three rounds, one, two, three, that one, then round after the third is an increase which means that all these rounds must be single crochets. There's three rounds in a row. Here you can find our next increase right there. Count up three rounds. One, two, three. Three rounds of single crochets. All right. And there still should be 15 stitches around. For round seven, we're going to do three single crochets. One, two, and three. And then we're going to do an invisible decrease. For an invisible decrease, you're going to take your crochet hook and place it under the front loop, only the front loop right there, of the next two stitches, one and two. Okay, those two front loops. And you're going to do a single crochet under those two front loops. And that's called an invisible decrease. It decreases us down very slowly. Okay, now we're going to repeat that three, more, uh, three times total. So there's three single crochets and then an invisible decrease three times total. Okay, so let's do our next three. So one, two, three single crochets, and then an invisible decrease right here. Okay. Let's do it again. Three single crochets. One, two, three, and then an increase, or I mean an invisible decrease. Sorry. There we go. And that's going to be the end of our uh, three repeats there. And now we're going to add our safety eyes and sew on the nose um, and maybe the large fin on the head. 
So let's start by adding um, the safe, or let's start by sewing on the nose, actually. All right, so to sew on the nose, you'll see that you have two ends coming out of uh, the nose here. You have one coming straight out of the middle, uh, and that's going to be the start of your part here. And then this one, the longer end, is for sewing around the outside. So we're going to start by threading this middle piece. Now normally I'd say probably try to make that a little bit longer if you can, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to take this, oops, we're going to take this end and we're going to go directly across from where the end of our piece is. So just directly across. Let's go with this stitch right there. Okay, right in the center. Go right in the center of that stitch. Okay, I don't know what stitch that is. I just find that it's directly across, and I'm going to go right in the center of the stitch. Okay. Now you want to sew this on around that stitch, using stitches around that stitch. So we're going to take this end here, take the longer end, add it to our needle. We're just going to sew around. That stitch that we just went in okay so we're going to start let's say it, it it could be helpful to count so let's start like right i'm gonna hold it down and start right let's start right here at the bottom looks pretty good all right so i'm going to start in this stitch and i'm going to come out the next stitch across the stitch next to it and now we can kind of count around so we know we have seven stitches to go into so we can go one two, three, four, five, six, and seven would be this one. So let's go into our first stitch across here our, on our snout. So right here, we go around the outside of that stitch, go into where we just came out, and then out through the next stitch around in the circle. And you can make that, you know, kind of wherever you think it should be. I'm going to pull this a little bit tighter and then I'm going to pull through. Okay, there's our first sew together. Now we can continue that process. We're going to go down through the next stitch in our snout right here and down into where we came out. We'll go into our next stitch around in the circle. Now might be a good time to count again. So we got on our snout we have one, two, three, four, five stitches to work into. Our last one is where we first went in, so right there. So we gotta count back from there. So one, let's say one, two, three, four, and then five, where we're coming out of. Okay, so we're just gonna go one, two, three. All right. Just a good way to like keep track of where you're sewing this on, so you can keep going in the right stitches. Okay, so like we said, we went, we go into this one, down, and then across to the next stitch. Using this color really makes this guy look a little bit like Qbert um, from the old NES game. <laughs> Qbert. All right, this next stitch. Now we're working back down. Just working our way to where we first went in. Right here, and we come out. This is where we first went into our piece. So we're coming out there, and we'll go down into the last stitch on our snout right here. All right, there you go. We have our little snout sewn on. And you can make that higher or lower depending on where you want the snout to be. If you want this nose to be a little bit clearer, very go, you know, get that hole a little bit more open. Take a little stick or a little pencil, go into the snout and just kind of like wiggle it around. It'll move that uh, those little strands of yarn away. All right, so now we can take these two ends here and we can just double knot them on the inside of the head. Okay, one and two. And we can cut these ends. Leave them pretty pretty close on the inside. Throw that to the side. We don't need that no more. And uh, there you go. Now you have the snout sewn on. Let's add our eyes.
All right, for our eyes, I'm using these um, safety bead eyes. I believe these are 10 millimeters around. And I like to go two stitches to the right and to the left of where I sewed the, uh, sewed the snout on. So if I go from the right, here's the edge of the snout. We go one, two, or I mean, sorry, two from that. So let's see, one, two, there we go. So it'd be right there. Okay, and don't lock it in just yet. Make sure it's, they're where you want them to be before you do that. And from the other side, looks like it goes in uh, right there. So we go one, two, right here. And put that in the eye. That's pretty good right there. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, it looks pretty good. You can see them both from the front. Yeah, I think that'll work. Okay, so you want to take these little soft end pieces and we'll put that around each of the back side of the eye here. Just push it in. Be careful not to hurt your finger. I just kind of did, but it's not that bad. Okay, might be easier just to push from the sides of it. And there we go. We got our eyes on now. Okay, starting to look a little bit like a fly. This could be the very cool beginning of a fly pattern, uh, like a cute fly. Okay, so next up we can sew on our um, mohawk here. Uh, you could wait a few rounds if you'd like to, to make sure that it's where you want it to be, but I think I'm pretty happy um, with how this guy is, and it looks like I have just enough room to sew it on. So let's go ahead and get this guy sewn on next. So what I like to do is there should again be two small, one small tail end, one long tail end. This is from the tail from the beginning and this is the tail from the end. Um, you can see it kind of has like a sharky tooth thing where they're all pointed a little bit that way. So you want to take our first tail end, thread that on the end of our needle. And we could just sew this right before the top. So if you go right into the to the very center of where we began, right there, you want to go one closer towards the nose. Um, now, as you can see, there's not really a perfect stitch here based on where we put our nose. So you can either go one to the left, or yeah, one to the left, one to the right. Um, we can even try going right through the center right there, or we could go one closer to the front so his mohawk is a little bit closer um, forward. Let's go, let's try going even closer to the front. That looks kind of cute. Like he'll look kind of like a little, yeah, looks cute. So let's do that. So we're going to go one closer to the front. And we're going to pull that through and that's just going to keep that front where we want it to be. Now we want to thread on the other end. And there's no like exact way to sew this on, but I find the best way thing to do is just make sure it's straight. Make sure it's going straight through for the back. And just find a stitch that's about in between where each of the eyes are. Go like right here. Well, let's go like right here. And I like to go two rounds up. Okay, so one, two, to find a pretty close to direct uh, path up through towards the center of the head. Um, another option would be right here to right there. That's pretty, that might be even cleaner. So let's do that one. So we're gonna start by going in. Oh, actually, let's see, how far down does this go? As you can see, this is kind of like ad-libbed here. Yeah, let's go. Let's go right here. We're gonna go two rounds up to right there. Okay, but first you want to go straight in through the head because you want to pull the knot of the back of this through. So I'll explain that in just a second. So you see, you can see this little knot right there. You want to pull that through the body. Okay, so just pull it, boop, till that knot like barely pokes out. You can see it barely poking out right there. Okay, and now we'll go two rounds up to where I said before, right here. And you want to go, come, you could just, actually, you can just bring it out. Okay, you can see that knot pulled itself out now. We've got to re-pull it in before we 
finish that up. So pull that knot through. There we go. And now we can finish pulling this. You just really want that knot on the inside. It looks kind of weird if you don't do that. Okay. Now we'll go around the bottom of, let's say like, you can pretty much go around anywhere here. You can go like straight through like that. Um, but let's do it more subtle. Let's go just under one of these strands of yarn, just like that. Then into our piece, two rounds up will bring you pretty close to the center right there. Okay, let's go around the next part right here. Back down through where you came out. And then I'm going to skip the center, go one close to the end right here. Then we're going to go across or around somewhere close, like, let's say like right there, like that one. Go into the body. Oops. Try that again. Go into the body. There we go. Pull that through. See, we got our mohawk pretty close to being done sewn on. And the last part we want to do is we want to pull this other end right here. You want to pull that knot through. So you can see it kind of moving there. So you want to pull that knot all the way through, just like we did for the beginning. You see it pulled out right there. Now we want to take both these ends and we can sew or we can double knot them together. One. And two. All right, you can cut this pretty close, throw that to the side, and there we go. We have our mohawk sewn on, we got our eyes on, and we have our tube nose sewn on. So you can see how he's kind of coming together there. This mohawk was maybe sewn on a little too close to the top of the head. Maybe it would have been better to go a little farther back, but there's only one way to find out, and that's going to be um, as we keep going on the body and seeing how funny it looks. Um, I don't think it'll look bad necessarily. I just think it's going to be closer than I was expecting. Uh, but that's kind of the fun of doing the sewing these things together early like this is that you don't, you get something a little bit different each time you make a seahorse. So that's kind of fun. All right. So we're on round eight of our, um, of our body here. For round eight, we want to single crochet one and then we'll do an invisible decrease in the next. Okay, so going into those two front loops, doing a single crochet into those. Okay, then you want to repeat that process of one single crochet and then an invisible decrease four times total. That's going to bring you down from 12 stitches around to eight stitches around. So we do a single crochet. Here's our second repeat. Oop, go into those front loops. There we go, one, two. Okay, so there's second repeat. Let's do our third repeat now. Single crochet. If you can see, it's kind of hard to get your finger in there, so I'm just kind of holding it closed. And then doing the front loop, and the front loop, and doing a single crochet. Let's do it again. Single crochet. Then we'll do front loop, and then front loop. This is going to be the last stitch. And there we go. That's going to be the end of round eight. So you can see he's got it kind of just pulled in there. For round nine, we're going to be increasing back up from eight stitches to 12 stitches. To do that, we're going to single crochet one in the first stitch, doing basically the exact opposite of the last stitch. So we're doing one single crochet and then one increase. So into the next stitch, we'll do two single crochets for an increase. One and two. And we're going to repeat that four times total. So we do a single crochet, increase. We keep doing that. Here's our second repeat. Single crochet. Increase right here. And you can see I pulled the strand out a little bit to give myself some room to work. And then pulled it tighter. So let me show you how I do that. Sometimes I pull it out like that. Gives my crochet hook some room to work. Then I find my way into the next stitch. And then pull a loop through, and then I can pull both these loops tighter. It gives me some mobility when it gets really tiny like this. Okay, here's our increase, single crochet. This is going to be our final increase right here. 
one and a two. All right, and that's going to be the end of round nine. And we're on round 10. There you go, see how it's coming in like that? All right, so for round 10, we're going to be working a single crochet into the next three stitches. One, two, three, and then we'll do an increase. One and two. Then we're going to do three single crochets again. One, two, three, then another increase, one and a two, and then we're going to finish this up by doing four single crochets. One, two, three, and four. All right, that's going to be the end of round 10. For round 11, we're just doing a single crochet into each stitch around. That's 14 single crochets total. Three, four, five. This is a good time to make sure that you're on track. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. And I know I'm on track because if I count back, one, two, three. There's the last increase from that previous round to make me know that that's the end of the round. All right, so we're, uh, that'll be the end of round 11. For round 12, we want to do four single crochets and then an invisible decrease. So let's do four single crochets. One, two, three, and whoops, four. And then an invisible decrease. So we're going into the front loops of the next two stitches. One, two. And doing a single crochet. Then we'll do two single crochets. One and two. And then another invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop. There we go. And then we'll we'll finish up this by doing four single crochets. One, two, three, and four. And now that'll be the end of round 12, and that'll be, um, uh, we should have 12 stitches around at the end of that round. Okay. For round 13, we're doing four single crochets. One, two, three, four. And then we'll be doing an invisible decrease. We'll actually be doing two invisible decreases. So we're gonna go into the front loops of the next two stitches. There's our first invisible decrease, and then we want to do another one of those. Front loop, front loop, boom. Okay, and then we'll finish it up by doing four single crochets. One, two, three, and four. And that should be the end of that round. You should have 10 stitches around, and that was the end of round 13. For round 14, we're going to be doing four single crochets. One, two, three, four, and then we'll be doing an invisible decrease going into the front loops of the next two stitches. Just one invisible decrease this time. And we'll finish it up by doing four more single crochets. So one, two, three, and four. Okay, for round 15, we'll be doing four single crochets again. One, two, three, and four. And then we'll be doing an invisible decrease. Just going into the front loops. One front loop, two front loops. And then we'll finish it up by doing three single crochets. One, two, and three. Now you should have eight stitches around. 
and that'll be the end of round 15. Okay. So for round 16, we'll be doing an invisible decrease. So we're going to start with invisible decrease. And then two single crochets. One. Two. And then another invisible decrease. Working to those two front loops. One. Two. And then finish up this round by doing two more single crochets. One. And two. All right, now we're going to take our crochet hook, make this loop a little bit bigger. We're going to take a second before continuing. We want to start by stuffing up the head as much as we can. A long stick like this works wonders here. You can also use the back of your crochet hook um, or a pencil. A pencil will also work. All right, so we need a little bit of stuffing. Now, you don't want the head too stuffed, but you also don't want it too loose. I like to take just a little bit of stuffing at a time placing it over the hole, and then just kind of working the stuffing in there. Now you want to get it into this first hole first, like just into the body, and then you want to keep working it all the way up. You can kind of feel it on the inside, filling up to the head. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, I like that. That's actually just enough for the head. Now before we go ahead and stuff the body fully, we need to uh, sew on the small fins onto his back right here. So we'll take the ends of the small fins, and these should have two ends, and you can kind of see how one side is a little bit higher than the other. If I turn it around, you can kind of see it points down now. You want to be pointing up on the body right here, and you want it somewhere along the back. I like to make the fins a little bit crooked like that, and just one stitch away from each other so that I'll explain what that means. Let's start by threading the top of the fin. Okay, we'll choose a stitch. Let's say this stitch right here. We'll go into the body and come out through the bottom right here. Okay, then we'll take the other end, thread that on the needle. and go in the next stitch down right here. And you want it tilted a little bit angled so it's like this way. Okay, so we want to go into the next stitch right here. And we'll go down through the bottom. And now both of these ends you want to pull enough so that these little bottom knots get pulled into the body. So there's one, pull this other side, two. Make sure they're really tight there. And now we can double knot these on the inside. So you just kind of double knot it, and I just pull it really tight until I can feel that it hits the back. Right there's so one, and here's our double knot. Two, there we go. We can cut the end here, throw that to the side. We'll do the other fin on the other side. So we'll do the same thing, thread the tops. Go a few stitches over, one, two, let's say like three stitches right here. Pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Go down through the bottom. Go down through the next stitch over. Again, we want it tilted in, okay? So we want to go down angled towards the other fin. Thread the other end of our um, fin here. Put that in the needle and just go ahead, go straight through. There you go. Now you can pull those two knots in. There we go. We could double knot these on the inside. There's one. And whoop, there we go. Two. Okay. And we can cut the ends here. Throw that to the side. And there you go. 
There's our little fins on the back here. Now we want to keep stuffing it a little bit more because uh, we want the body stuffed. So we'll grab a little bit more of our stuffing and just go ahead and stuff that right into the body, to the body. Okay, you want to get it as stuffed as you want currently. So you don't want to get it, you don't want to stuff it, or you're not going to be able to stuff it any more than, than right now. So really make sure that you have enough stuffing in there. Because the hole is about to get very small and difficult to stuff with. All right, so that's probably pretty good. It's got a little belly there. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. Okay, so let's get back to crocheting. We are on round 17. So for round 17, it's pretty easy. We're just going to be doing a single crochet into each stitch around. So for each stitch, as you can see, I'm doing that method where I pull up my crochet hook out and then I pull it tighter once I'm into the stitch because it's getting pretty small now. And that's probably, you're going to have to likely be doing that at least somewhat um, throughout the rest of this pattern because the hole is very small and you have to do a lot of single crochet stitches. Okay, that should be, I don't know, a couple more. Actually, I think this is the last one right here. All right, so that's the end of round um, 17. For round 18, we'll be doing an invisible decrease in the first right here. One, two. And then a single crochet into the next four stitches. One, and as you can see, I kind of bit point down to get make sure I'm into that stitch. So point down and then point it up out of the hole. All right, and that's going to be the end of round 18. Now, you should have five stitches around. For rounds 19 to 25, that's seven rounds in a row. So that's uh, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, seven rounds. We want to do a single crochet in each stitch around, just in a circle. You should have five stitches per round, and we want to do seven rounds of that. So this is getting the length of the tail now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera because it's a little tedious uh, and um, my back is starting to hurt from being on camera for so long. And I'll be right back in just a second. Okay, so I've finished up my seven rounds of single crochets. You can see how long his tail is um, before we add our pipe cleaner to make it curvy. Um, for our final round of, sing of crocheting, for round 26, we'll do an invisible decrease into the first. Okay, so just going under these two front loops. One, this part's hard. If you can't do this, just do um, single crochets in all stitches one more time. There's our two invisible decreases. Do a single crochet in that. And then a single crochet into our next three stitches. Again, this is like so tight and small that it's kind of hard to tell where those stitches are. One, one more, two, there we go, and boom, three. Okay, now we can cut the yarn about right to there. And first off, if you've gotten this far into the pattern, thank you so much for watching this pattern in general. Um, please, if you like it, make sure to like down below, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already, and share this pattern in a any crochet groups that you um, like or, uh, yeah, because it really helps um, me out and, and these videos. Um, I do all this by myself, and so, uh, yeah, I just sometimes could use a little bit of help. So thanks so much for watching just in general. Okay. So, for the end of this uh, piece, and I think the funnest part to it, you want to take half of your pipe cleaner, and you want to fold that half in half, boop, like so. You want to really fold in half there, and you want to twist it. Grab the end and just start twisting it all the way up. You don't need it incredibly twisted, just, a, just enough. 
Just one twist. There we go. Okay, and you want to take these two ends and fold them down so that they're kind of like a hook. Okay, like so. That's pretty good. So it's kind of like an arrow. Now you want to put this into the tail. Okay, so this could be a little bit tough, but you want to go into that tail and you just kind of like push and twist to get it in and then it gets all the way up. There we go. Like that. Okay. Now you can see it, it'll be bendable. Now we'll go ahead and sew the bottom of this closed. We'll just take the tail end here. Okay. Count two stitches over. One, two, right here. Go into that stitch. Come out through where our stitch is coming out, right there. One. Go into the next stitch over and out through the stitch across. Two. And then we'll go down through the last stitch right here and then out through pretty much anywhere on the tail. Three. Looks like we got a little straggler there. Let's fix that up. How we fix that is we can go back in through where we came out. Coming out through somewhere close. Grabbing that straggler and pulling that in and out through pretty much anywhere. That should fix that straggler up. There we go. I'm glad that happened so you can see how that sometimes happens and how to fix it. Okay, so you can cut the end here pretty close. And here's our tail. Now all we have to do is make sure the pipe cleaner is all the way down to the end of the tail. I can kind of feel it a little bit higher than I wanted it to be. But you can just turn and start twisting this tail in. And there you have it. A seahorse. There we go. I'm going to send this to my mom because <laughs> she's going to like it a lot. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, if you like this video, please like and subscribe down below. And if you want to get more patterns like um, how to make this little seaweed stand. Ooh, I got to get it just right. There we go. Seaweed stand for your seahorse. Um, become a Club Crochet member at clubcrochet.com. Uh, it really supports this channel uh, quite a lot. And um, yeah, you get a bunch of patterns like this, uh, that pattern. Um, there's things like uh, patterns for little orcs and um, patterns for this fella. I call him the antlered meeple walker. Just a bunch of weird patterns like that. Here is a Yeti. Um, so you get patterns all like this by becoming a Club Crochet member at clubcrochet.com. Um, thank you so much again for watching pasta la pizza and happy hooking let's say goodbye buddy